morning. Today we're going to be making a chicken pot pie. This, it's January, so this is something I like to make when the weather is cool. It is just a comforting and, you know, comforting, delicious. And that's pretty much, pretty much all I want right now. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started with an onion. You can use any kind of onion you like. I have a sweet onion. I usually use a yellow onion. Um, you, you honestly could use any onion you like though. And I just wanna dice it up. I've got about two tablespoons of butter in my pot and I added about another two tablespoons of olive oil to it. Just give this a dice. So normally when I do this, I am starting with chicken thighs are kind of my favorite, chicken thighs or chicken leg quarters. And so usually when I make chicken pot pie, I would saute those up in my pot and then you get all the nice like chicken fat flavor uh, that's in there. And then I would saute all of my vegetables in that. Um, I actually, I honestly, I kind of wasn't thinking the other day when I, I roasted, I bought a pack of chicken leg quarters, which they're like a dollar fifty, a dollar sixty a pound. I mean, everything at the grocery store is so expensive right now. Um, I am definitely going to be using more chicken leg quarters in the future. Um, but so they're really inexpensive and a leg quarter is the thigh with the leg still attached to it. Um, but again, inexpensive, so I bought a big pack of them. It was like four of them for $5.50. It was under $6. Uh, I think with tax, it was still under $6. It was very expensive. And I just brought them home and went ahead and roasted them in a 400 degree, 400, 420, something like that. Um, for, I don't know, third, till they were done, really. I, until they were 165 inside probably 45 minutes. I honestly don't remember though. So I am going to use two. I roasted four. Um, I used two in something else already. A chicken soup I made a few nights ago. And that's why I roasted them was for just to go ahead. And I was originally, my plan originally was to buy a rotisserie chicken and just shred it up and just use it to make a few meals with. But I ended up getting the leg quarters, so I roasted them all at the same time. And uh, so, oops, looks like I've got a piece that didn't cut. Um, there we go. So got them roasted all at the same time. So I've got two that I'm just gonna shred up today. Not a big difference from how I normally make it. But saves a little bit of time right now. All right, so I've got this on about medium. So I've got an onion. I'm going to do some celery. And I've got three stalks of celery. I think I usually use two, but these were towards the center and they're a little shorter. Celery hearts, I guess. Thank you. 
Okay, these are so thin, I don't think I need to actually cut them in half. Normally, you know, they're a thicker carrot and I have to cut them in half, but these are really thin. So I'm just gonna zip through them. in the fats and do a little salt and pepper. look at it. It's not like I can remember them all. Calls for five cloves of garlic. So that is very garlic forward. But that is fine because I bought a ton of garlic for the holidays and it's beginning to sprout. So it definitely needs to get used. Okay. turn this down to medium low. My vegetables are getting nice and soft. There's no browning on them. I'm not really looking for that necessarily. It wouldn't be a bad thing, but um, I really just want to get them softened because being a chicken pot pie, you do it stovetop and then you later put it in the oven. So I am just going to run through this garlic real quick. That is stir. And just because I know I just said, you know, this is cooking here and then it's going in the oven, just because you're cooking in that kind of method uh, or doing a long cook doesn't mean that you don't want to get a ton of flavor out of your vegetables by caramelizing them. Just not in chicken pot pie. All right. I really do. I'm not making a sauce. I mean, it's going to be, it's vegetables and chicken suspended in a sauce, right? So I, I want to taste the individual individual components that make it up. Does that make sense? Um, okay, mushrooms. So I've got eight ounces of mushrooms. I just went ahead and wiped them off with a paper towel.
All right, so I wanna get my mushrooms in there and then I'm going to let this cook uh, for a little while. Let the mushrooms kind of sweat out. You want to, I'm gonna go ahead and salt again. That's gonna help bring the water out of the mushrooms. And just kind of go ahead and get a jump start on the water coming out of the mushrooms and then cooking down. And I am actually, I've got a handful of thyme that I went and picked out of my garden this morning. So I'm gonna just throw that in there and I'll pull the stems out later. It's funny when you put mushrooms in a dish because it feels like they, I mean, they're so sponge-like, just like there was oil. <laughs> I could see a little oil in the bottom of this dish and now there's none at all. And it's just that the mushrooms just like absorb all of that. But then once they start releasing their water, and I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little to kind of help. Honestly, sweating mushrooms can take forever sometimes. So uh, once they start releasing their water, it's gonna get really juicy in here. And then you have to wait through uh, and let that water evaporate. So, all right, I'm gonna stop fiddling with it and be back when they're sweated down. All right, so I'm gonna shred up this row. It's not rotisserie. I'm gonna shred up this chicken that I've got. So you can see, and it, it looks a little funky because I roasted it and then it's been in the refrigerator for a couple of days. Probably, just, I think I did it yesterday. Um, so it's a leg cord, right? So it's got the thigh and the leg attached. And then I've got a bag with chicken bones um, that I use to make stock with. So I just emptied my bag out to make stock, which is simmering on my stove right now not in time for, for this dish. So I, I have a little, I have one cup of homemade chicken stock left and it's, it's going in here. Um, but yeah, so, so I save up my chicken skin and bones, anything that uh, isn't like too saucy, you know, anything that didn't get like a lot of tomato sauce on it or some kind of really spicy or aggressive flavoring. This was just roasted in olive oil, so these are kind of like ideal. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, so I save my bones and skin, freeze it, and then when I get the bag, this is a gallon bag, when it's about three quarters of the way full, I have estimated that is roughly two chickens worth of bones, and I uh, will then make some stock. So. Cleaned out the freezer, make it stock at the moment, and already starting it up to starting up my bag to make more stock in the future. It's gonna take a little while. A few more chicken meals. So and that's one reason that I really like to cook with um, there we go, there's a bone. That's why I like to use like bone-in skin on chicken, um, mostly when I cook because you get to make your own stock from it, which, you know, I'm not gonna trash store-bought stock. I mean, it's good stuff. I think the homemade is a little bit better, um, but it's definitely a lot, a lot cheaper to make. Um, so right now I have, like I said, roughly two chickens worth of uh, bones cooking. So. It is, let's see, it's the carcass of a rotisserie chicken that I've got in there, and I believe eight thighs. But we've eaten the meat, right? So it's eight, and again, it's the carcass and the, the, the skin and bones, and then a little bit of meat. I mean, you've, you've seen. I wiped my counter down, so it's clean. Um, you know, you saw what I just threw, threw in there. So there's a little bit of meat left on the bones, but it, I don't know, it's just, it, it's so inexpensive to make because you're using a product that otherwise is just gonna go in the trash can. And then, let's see, I threw in a, oop, 
I threw, I threw meat in there. Whoops, whoops. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> Keep an eye out when you're doing this. Um, I threw in two stalks of celery, an onion, a couple of bay leaves, and probably like a tablespoon of black pepper. Uh, corns, the whole corns, and I will strain that. It, it's going to cook, I don't know, I want to say like 10 hours is how long it's going to cook. Um, I forget. I always have to look it up. It's a good part of the day. It's like 8 to 10 hours. You can cook it longer. In, in fact, I actually used to cook it a lot longer than that, but I found that it started like giving this kind of like unappetizing smell. And like my whole house just did it again. But my whole house would just have this like, I don't know, kind of unappetizing smell if it cooked for longer than 12 hours. So, you know, I, I kind of had to say, well, maybe the, the properties of the homemade bone broth are better if I continued cooking it, but, oh, I'm gonna turn this heat now. Okay, so my mushrooms are getting nice and sweated down. Um, they're definitely, you can see them, they're getting dark, a lot darker. I want to get this chicken shredded and get all this off my hand, so I just turned the heat down to low, which I should have done a minute ago, but got to talking and forgot. Uh, anyway, so, so the chicken broth, it's going to cook for, like I said, eight, maybe ten hours. I'm going to have to check and see. Uh, I still get a nice gelatinous chicken broth at the end of it. So, yes, you can cook it longer. A lot of people do. Um, it just becomes kind of a pain to me after a certain, certain amount of hours. Beef broth, I do cook a little longer, um, a few hours longer. I think I do a minimum of like 12 hours on it, which means... Whew, you gotta do it on the weekend. You gotta wake up early. But uh, I'm, oh, I'm I've got like two pints of beef broth left, so I need to do that. Although most, I you know, beef isn't sold on the bone that often, so I don't really come across beef bones that. And I'll, I'll use lamb. Like I'll throw lamb in there too, but um, I don't eat a ton of lamb, and rarely do I come across like beef that's got bones in it. Um, so, oh my gosh, I'm doing it again. I'm just talking and I'm throwing the chicken into the freezer bag. There we go. There we go. Good grief. Okay. There's the bone. A little bit of meat on it still, but... Not a whole lot. And that, uh, chicken legs, I mean, I love chicken drums as a kid, and I, I guess if I'm eating fried chicken, I still like a chicken drum, but it's definitely got some ligaments <laughs> attaching the meat to the bone, so it is, uh, I'm okay with some of that. It gets a little stringy. So I'm, I'm happy for that to go into the bone pile. Um, but yeah, so uh, like I said, uh, cook it, uh, I will probably throw it in the refrigerator, let all the fat come up to the top. So I'll skim some of it off. I don't get too crazy about skimming all the fat off. I mean, it's flavor, and it honestly, like, it doesn't stay in my pantry for that long. Like, I, I go through it a good bit, um, especially the chicken. Not so much with the beef. I don't go through it as quickly. Um, but with the chicken broth, like, yeah, I go through that pretty fast. Um, but I will then pressure can it. So that is, you know, ugh, such a pain to do, but it then makes it, sh it makes it shelf stable then, which is really nice because I have this teeny tiny freezer. My refrigerator is, it's a counter depth refrigerator, which is what I wanted. Um, as you can see, we have a multitude of doors uh, right by the refrigerator. So I didn't want one and we don't even have an actual counter beside it. It's just a little table we bought, but, um, I didn't want a refrigerator that stuck out very far. So I paid more 
for a smaller refrigerator. It's just two of us. The refrigerator part's fine. That's only an issue sometimes at like Thanksgiving or Christmas. Things get a little bit full. Um, you know, like the ketchup might have to go in the garage for a, in a cooler in the garage for a little while. You know, it's not the end of the world, but the freezer is definitely, definitely a, a, a pain point with this, um, with this refrigerator setup. So uh, I used to just, when I had a normal freezer, I used to just freeze my stock. That was super easy to do. Strain it, throw it in little like two cup plastic to go containers and just throw in your freezer. So easy to do. Um, can't do that anymore. So I have to pressure can it and I keep it in my pantry in my basement, which is fine and it tastes great and it's shelf stable and it's safe to eat and all that. But the actual process of canning, especially pressure canning, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I am gonna get cleaned up real quick and I will be right back. Okay, so we're back. Got all my chicken shredded up and this is the casserole dish that I'll use for the chicken pot pie. Uh, what I want to do now is start making the sauce, which I'm going to use a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Sprinkle that over. And really what I'm looking for with this, this is just mixing with the fats and any liquids that are left in here. And it is making, I mean, honestly, it's making a roux, right? So roux just being flour and butter, fat, something like that, a, a type of fat and flour mixed together. So we just want to get a little bit, I just don't want to see any more white flour basically. So I've turned my heat up a little bit. So it is medium, medium low now. And so at first it does kind of look like a gummy mess. You can see in the bottom, it's not white anymore, right? I'm beginning to get some color on that flower. It's like a blonde color. I don't know how well that's gonna actually show up on your end. So you're just getting rid of the raw taste. And then I'm gonna add wine. And so when I, I, I don't have a bottle of wine. Um, when I buy wine for cooking or, or even for drinking, usually when I buy it for drinking, I uh, don't have any leftovers. But when I buy it for cooking, I often do. So. <laughs> In order to keep wine on hand and not getting drunk up, I freeze it, which this has been sitting out so it's starting to melt, but I just use a little ice cube tray. Um, this is one that incidentally is made for ice cube. It is not made for like storing soups or stocks. I know there's a whole ton of them out there, but I measured and each one of these cubes holds two tablespoons. Um, I have six cubes, so that's half a cup plus a quarter cup. My recipe, usually I just use half a cup. I'm gonna throw it all in there though, just because uh, I should have waited until I needed the wine and then taken it out of the freezer and I would have perfect cubes. Since I have let this thaw out a little bit, there's no way I can get the amount that I need out. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it all because they're half, they're half soupy, so I mean, it's fine. It's not a big deal to use them all. All right. And then when I freeze them, I do keep them in a little baggy. <sighs> because it, I mean, they, you know, you don't want them to make a mess. And while they're freezing, they're still liquid, so they will, and even like, you know, they never, it's wine, it's alcohol, it never freezes through, so it's always 
susceptible. Like the first thing, if the power goes out, it's going to thaw is that. So I want to have a lid on it, which like I said, that one was made for freezing ice cubes. Doesn't come with a lid. So a little baggie works just fine. And then you really just want to cook this. So go ahead and start working to get what's on the bottom off. Little bits that are stuck to the bottom. And you're really waiting. So when a recipe says that, you know, allow the alcohol to cook off, I didn't know what that meant for years. It, it really just means that you're waiting to no, no longer smell alcohol when you stand over the pan. That means the alcohol itself has cooked off. And I no longer smell it, so I'm gonna go ahead with my recipe, which now calls for one cup of chicken stock. And then I am going to get my chicken in here. vegetables. Oh. Here we go. So I'm going to do half a cup each of peas and corn. And I am just going to go ahead and put them in right now. They're, they're both still frozen, at least mostly frozen. So they should fall out pretty quickly. Um, and then all the water can just reduce at the same time. And you really can use any combination of vegetables that you would like to use. So this now has peas, carrots, no, it does, yeah, it's got onion, celery, carrot, and then peas and corn in it. Which you don't really see corn and chicken pot pie that much, but I really like corn. Oh, and it adds so much color to it. And I can go ahead, this one kind of came up to the surface, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of my thyme leaves out. Just put them in here. That one's still hanging on to its leaves, so I'm gonna let it cook a little longer. And that's not all, we will add a little bit more liquid to this in just a few minutes, but I'm gonna get some of this put up and clean up a little bit. All right, so everything's coming together nicely. I am going to add about half a cup of heavy cream. Got to talking earlier and totally forgot to add it, so. And then we're just gonna let all of this kind of cook together just for a few minutes. Add a little salt, a little more. A little bit more pepper. Let it cook together for a few minutes. Then we'll get it in our casserole dish and go from there. All right, so. I am not eating this right now. It's morning. I mean, it's not even noon yet. So uh, it's a little early for a chicken pot pie, but look at it, it looks delicious. Um, I am very excited to eat it later tonight. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in the pan. Normally when I make chicken pot pie, I top it with puff pastry. Um, puff pastry, crescent dough, like you, actual crescents or just the sheet of crescent dough are really good alternatives uh, for topping. And actually, I really like probably the crescent dough is my favorite. Um, but puff pastry, you could even do something like phyllo. You can make your own biscuits. You can make your own kind of 
pie topping, you can make, or like pie dough topping, you can use frozen biscuits. I am gonna use canned biscuits. This is something my grandmother always did. And I have puff pastry in my freezer, but I also have canned biscuits and their expiration date comes a lot sooner. And they are just nice and, you know, I mean, a biscuit is amazing. Um, puff pastry is great too, but just in more of a biscuit mood. Um, so what I'll do, because I'm not eating this right away, I'm not gonna open my biscuits, I'm not gonna put the biscuits on top of it just yet. So when I'm ready to eat that, I'm gonna refrigerate it. If I, were, if I were gonna cook it right now, I would put it in here, I would put it in the oven for 30, 45 minutes. I'd probably go ahead and put my puff pastry on top, I would brush it with an egg wash, put it in the oven, cook it probably about 30 minutes right now from hot into the oven let those flavors come together let your puff pastry cook I would say 30 minutes okay um this is going to go into the pot I'm going to cover it saran wrap and it's going to be refrigerated for a few hours so when I pop it in the oven tonight uh, I'm going to be cooking it longer, probably more like 45 minutes because it won't be hot any longer, right? So I've got to add cook time to it. Uh, these biscuits say they cook in 13 to 16 minutes. So I'm going to cook this uncovered for about 30 minutes. Then I will put, I believe it's eight, makes eight biscuits. Yeah. So then I will put my biscuits on top and continue cooking it until the biscuits are finished, right? Um, because every, like you could eat this right now, uh, and it would be delicious. It's going to thicken up a little bit more as it continues to cook in the oven, but the filling is cooked. So we are just heating tonight, or even if we were to put it in the oven right now, either way, we are just heating everything through, um, making sure that everything has time to come together, become like a not a homogenous mixture, like I said earlier, you know, I want to taste the individual components in it, but kind of let those flavors meld together. Um, and then most importantly, with the chicken pot pie, you want to make sure that whatever kind of bread topping you are using is getting cooked through. All right, so I, before I eat it, I'll show you what it looks like with the biscuits on it and then what it looks like cooked. Uh, I'm sure you can imagine it. I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, it doesn't look as fancy as the puff pastry, but like I said, this is what my grandmother used to do, and I, I've just kind of been thinking about it a lot lately. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in the casserole dish. And I don't know what size casserole dish this is. It was something that I bought years ago at like a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls or Tuesday morning. I think I bought it on Tuesday morning, actually. One of the few times I've been in one. I don't see them that often. But um, it's not quite a nine by 13. I don't know what the measurement is. You can put this in a nine by 13. You really can put this in whatever dish it will hold. Don't worry about the measurement on it. I'm just gonna flatten it out. I'm not gonna stick it in the free refrigerator immediately. I do want it to cool down some um, so I don't ruin everything in my fridge. Uh, and like I said, I'll show you once I get the biscuits on it and what it looks like then. But my house smells awesome, this smells delicious, and I am gonna make a leftover ham sandwich for lunch because I'm starving now. So, uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, I will see you later, bye.